This is my self-watering, sub-irrigated, self-fertilizing, drought-proof, bug-proof, back to Eden, arborist wood chip compost, raised bed wicking pond. G'day, I'm Gary. In this video, I'm going to cover this wicking pond that I've set up, and I'm going to go over the details of what I'm doing here. I've got several of these ponds set up. They're all configured a little differently, but I'm going to start the growing season with this one. I'm working on it right now. I'm planting lettuce that I got from Robbie's garden. So I, the other day I collected a couple of dozen lettuces that were growing on Robbie's deck garden and one of the planters. They needed to be thinned out. So what I did was I brought some down here and I just planted them straight into the wood chips here. Now, they're all doing quite well. They didn't go into shock. They seem to be taking off. They actually appear to be a little bit bigger than they were two days ago. And what I'll do is I'll talk about what I've got set up here and why I set it up. And I'll also cover some of the plants that I've been successfully growing in this so far. In the beginning, I had this set up as a planter. I picked up this hot tub from a yard sale, it cost me $20, that included them loading it onto my truck, which would have been almost impossible for me to do myself, so they loaded it onto my truck. I eventually, after having it set up in another spot, I brought it down here, I dug a hole so that the feet part of the tub sat underground. I leveled it out and got it nice and level and I've been using it as a planter for a number of years. The beauty of having a hot tub as a raised bed, it just seems to be the right height and the right size to be able to do a lot of things with it. So I can sit on a chair and I can work on my garden or I could sit on the edge and reach all the way into the centre. And that feature has been very useful to me. So this is in its permanent position now. The other thing is with this hot tub, when I purchased it, it had already had all the hardware removed from it. So it's got plenty of drain holes in the bottom of it. I could have set it up as a pond, but I would have had to do a little bit more work and I would have had to plug all the holes and start again. So rather than do that, I decided to use the kiddie pools inside of it. So I cleared it out and set these up. I did that after testing the wading pools in the other part of my garden. And once I figured a few things out over there, I decided to run with it. So this was redone and this is one of my favorites still. So anyhow, what I'll do is I'll show you how I set the inserts in the pools. I've got those set up over there. I've got another set that I'm going to build another pond with. So I'll just show you what it looks like empty. I cleared just enough soil out of my hot tub so that I could set the large wading pool in. I leveled it out. I made sure that it was level to start with. Then I backfilled around it. The first smaller pond I put in doesn't have any holes in it, so I set that in the base. I'm going to use the bricks just as an example. But what I did was I ended up filling it with some construction sand. So the construction sand, I filled this up to level with the top. So once the construction sand was in, I didn't wash the construction sand, so it did make the water a little cloudy. I added some water to that level. Then I went ahead and put the top layer in. So this top pond, I drilled some holes in it. These are about quarter inch holes. I spaced them around six to eight inches around the perimeter, kind of right at the edges, the corners. So that sat on top of the construction sand. It elevated it a little bit above the outside pond or the outside pool so that if it filled up, the water would flow over and 
the center wouldn't be completely saturated or under the water. So that's basically how I had it set up. From there I added the sifted wood chips into it. So I went over to my wood chip pile, my compost pile. I started to sift some wood chips specifically to fill this with. I have two size screens. I have this one which is half by one inch and that's the one that I'm going to use for my wicking beds. I've also got this quarter inch screen that I use for planters and pots. So the quarter inch goes inside the main trommel. I just slide it in, it bounces around, I don't need that. The reason I'm going with the coarser material, the coarser material has larger chunks in it, it takes longer to break down and I think it's better for a wicking bed. I have tried the finer material on one of my first ones, but it tends to break down too quickly. So I'm just going to sift some for the wicking ponds using the coarser sifter. It's just a matter of throwing in some wood chips, turning the trommel, and what I'm trying to do is remove the real large pieces that I don't want. So the, what's left over goes back into the pile and I allow it to continue to break down. I've already got a few plants growing in this pond. I've been using it to start seeds. So I've got some canna edulis. And I just drop them in in a clump. Now this is a good example of what happens if you don't separate your plants. So the ones here I left in a clump. The other ones here that I started to space out are doing a lot better. So spacing is important even in a wicking pond like this. I've got some taro that's coming up. I've had this taro growing last year and it's coming back now. I've also planted some pigeon peas just as a test. They're a little on the yellow side, but I'm going to transplant those out pretty soon. I've already planted the lettuce. And to plant the lettuce, it's very simple. You just have to grab a lettuce, poke a little hole in the wood chips, drop it in, pack it back down, and you're done. Very simple. So what I'm going to do is use this mainly as a seed starting bed. In the meantime I'm going to grow some lettuce. I've also tried a couple of cuttings. I've got a pepino here. I broke a piece off and I stuck it in. It's set root. So that pepino I can plant somewhere else. I've also put a piece of Malabar spinach in. That's already started to set root. So I can plant that somewhere else. I know I've got Malabar spinach seeds that are going to be dropping in here, so I'm sure they'll just come up once the weather starts warming up a bit. I've got Malabar spinach growing up the trellis all the way around here. So I've got Malabar spinach growing in the soil around the outside. I've also planted a few other things. I've got my turmeric. My yellow turmeric I left in the soil. That can overwinter well here. I dug my white turmeric out and I took that up into the house. I can plant that back again soon. I've got some walking onions growing around here. The sow thistle has come up by itself. Got a few other things here. These I think are walking onions as well. Another thing that I had to be mindful of here are mosquitoes. So to prevent the mosquitoes, I stocked the pond with gambusia or mosquito fish. And when our friend Nick Federoff was over, he mentioned that the 80s mosquito lays eggs at the edge of the water. So every now and then I just take a stainless steel scrubber and I just go around and I remove the hard water marks around the edge. So if any 80s mosquitoes come along and laid eggs, 
that would go back into the pond and pretty much the mosquito fish are taking care of the mosquitoes anyway. So if the wa water goes up over where they've laid their eggs and the eggs hatch, they'll go back into the water. If I set a bucket next to my pond, it would have wrigglers or mosquito larvae in it. But inside the ponds, I haven't noticed any mosquito larvae. So the fish are working out really well. During the summer months, we have a lot of dragonflies down here. So I don't have to worry about walking around at night with mosquitoes biting me. So I'm very happy with my self-watering sub-irrigated system. The water wicks in through the holes in the bottom. The wood chips underneath the water level are saturated. The ones above have got plenty of air space for the plants to grow in. So it constantly wicks up water. And there is water going in and out of the system. During the summer, I don't have to worry too much about it overflowing. I just have to top the water up on the outside. When I come down here, I can look at the outside. I can tell if it needs water or not. I can go away and not have to worry about coming down here every day. Some days it's not possible for me to make it down into my garden, so this has worked out really well. I don't even have to worry about this part of the garden. During the winter months, when we get most of our rain, this does fill up. I am eventually going to have to come up with a draining system that I can use to get the water level down to where I want it. I haven't worked on that yet, but that's coming. So right now all I'm doing is getting a cup, scooping the water out, and using it on my plants. So I could fill a bucket and take it to other parts of my garden. So the water that's in here right now is very tea-like. It's a compost tea coming from the wood chips, so I believe it's very nutritious to my other plants. The wood chips provide all the nutrition, so I don't need to add any more fertilizer or anything to, to the system. The plants seem to be doing well. I'm choosing plants that I know are working. Some of the plants, if they don't look so good, I won't grow them in here. But a lot of the other plants that I've tried are doing quite well here. Having the moat around the outside of the pond has worked out really well. It keeps the roly polies or pill bugs and snails out. They're the two main pests that we have here. I imagine it would keep slugs out as well if you had a slug issue. So I have it pest proof, except for anything that can jump or leap across the moat. Just to move or circulate the water a little bit, I set up this solar fountain pump. Even on a cloudy day, it still works. So it's going to agitate the water just a little bit to break the surface. To prevent birds or lizards getting stuck in the pond, I set up these little ladders. I set it up in a couple of different places. So if a bird or a lizard gets in the pond, it can swim around, find a ladder and get out. That pretty much sums up what I wanted to say in this video. I'm going to be working on more ponds as the growing season starts kicking in. And with that, Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to eat what you grow.